Hi! In today's video I will add a LED over the device tree to a Linux board. Well, this doesn't sound much you may think, but you will learn a lot on the way. So you will learn how to modify the device tree, how to add a new device, how to select a compatible driver, and you will also learn a little bit about pin multiplexing and how to do it in the device tree, at least for TI-based controllers, because this is a little bit different, pin multiplexing is a little bit different on other platforms. So what's the goal for today? Here I have opened up the hardware manual from my Forlinx OK6254 board. And you can see here I have this pin header called QSPY, to which the QSPY interface is routed. But let's say for my application I don't need QSPY and instead I want to connect an LED to a QSPY pin. So um, here is a closer view to this pin header. And what I did is I connected an LED to OSPY clock 3.3 volt to this pin here. This is pin 5 of this pin header. And now I want to add this pin to the device tree, configure it for a normal GPIO operation and then load a, the GPIO MLED driver for it so I can control it over my user space. So let's take a look how to do this. Here is um, my terminal and I've already in my OK6254 Linux SDK folder and I've already in the kernels folder. And if I navigate to Arch ARM64 because my board is from this architecture, um, then boot DTS for device resources and TI because the chip vendor of this board is Texas Instruments, so the chip on this board is from Texas Instruments. And now if I take a look at OK62541, you can see in here I have multiple device tree files. And this device tree file is the one I have to edit um, or to edit my LED. So the first thing I will do is I will make a backup of this in case I mess around something and destroy it or have to restore the old value so now I have a backup. And then let's open it up. So here we can see we have some includes and the first include here are some device tree bindings for LEDs and GPIOs. The next one is interesting. You have to know on this board, Forlinx is using the AM625 chip from Texas Instruments. And Texas Instruments already offers a device tree source input file describing their processor. And this is the file we are including here. So basically we are saying, okay, we include the K3M625 device tree source input file. And in there we can find a description for the processor. For example, how many cores we have. And this is nice to use because now Forlinks only has to include this file and the whole processor is described and set up correctly. Then here we have the root path of our device tree. And here we can see various devices. For example, down here we have the memory, the RAM, and on this device we have two gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, I think. So here we have a lot of other devices, but let's search for LEDs because there are already some defined LEDs in here. Okay, so here we have some user LEDs and I will use this as a template to add my LEDs. So I will add a new device, I will call my LED. The first thing I'm declaring here is a compatible string and I will set it to GPIO minus LEDs. And this compatible string tells us which driver will be used. So in this case, we will use the GPIO LEDs driver, which offers the ability to control LEDs from the user space. And then let's define the pins we will have. So I will have one pin, which I will call my LED. This pin needs a label. This label will appear under slash sys, slash class, slash LEDs. And I will call it my LED. Then the second thing here is the GPIO I want to use. And I've looked this GPIO here up. And this is connected to GPIO IP0, pin 0. 
So here what I can do is I can type main GPIO zero, pin zero, and this is a GPIO active high. And then I can also set the default state and I will turn it on. So when loading this device or the driver for this pin or for this device, the our LED here should be turned on. Okay, so much for the pin and let's close the device. So now we're already done. We have added the device, but the problem is we haven't um, yeah, spoken about the pin multiplexer. But first, what is pin multiplexing? Well, therefore, let me open up the datasheet of the AM62X Citara processors. You have to know, on modern chips, you have a lot more interfaces than you have physical pins. And with the pin multiplexer, you can map a physical pin to a specific function. So the first one I want to show you here is the OS by zero clock pin, which we will be using for to drive our LED. And here is a register at this physical address. And over this register, you can do the mapping between the function and the physical pin. So there is a field called max mode and over this field you can determine which interface is routed to the pin. So if you set this max mode to zero, this bit field, the pin is connected to OS by zero clock. If you are writing a seven to it, it's connected to GPIO zero pin zero. A little better example is this pin down here. So this is the OS by zero chip select number two pin. And now let's say you are using the OSPI interface, but you don't need chip select two. You only need chip select number zero. This is enough because you only connect one device to it. Well, in this case, you could use this pin for something else. For example, if you're writing MOX mode seven, it's a GPIO open again. If you're writing a five to the MOX mode, you can use it as your five, um, the receive pin. Or if you're writing a one to it, you can use it as chip select one of SPI interface one. So really over the pin multiplexer, you can map a physical pin to a function, to an available function. So here in our case, we have to write a seven into this MOX mode. So here on the right hand side, you can see there are some more options to um, yeah, set up. One option here, for example, is some pins have an operating voltage, which could be 1.8 volt or 3.3 volt. And there are some other settings you can do here in, yeah, over these registers. But the most important is the multiplexer mode. Okay, so now let's set the multiplexer mode in our device tree. So I will use this one as an example here. And I will create here a new field I will call my LED pin, my LED pin so and here I will copy this pin control single pins and in here I'm um, declaring the multiplexer modes Let, maybe let's also copy this here so the first one here is are the lower significant bytes of the address so here for example I have to use so the um, or yeah, the 12 lower significant bits of this are zero. So I have to set this here to zero. Then I want to use it as a pin output and the multiplexer mode should be seven. And this will configure the pin for us. I can add a comment here if I want. Um, O's by O's by zero clock as GPIO. Okay, and now if I go back to my LED and I copy these two lines here, I will set the pin control to my LED pin, which is my, this pin, which is this declaration down here. And there shouldn't be a space in here. Okay. And one important thing is, by default, the OSPA interface is turned on. So I have to turn it off again. 
to be able to use this pin. And how can I do this? Well, let's search for OSPY0. So here we have the pin. So over the pins, we should be able to find the interface. And to disable this, all I have to do is I have to type in status equal disabled. And then the OSPY interface is disabled. And down here you can see there is a flash connected to this OSPY um, interface. So this flash won't be accessible any longer because we have disabled the OSPY interface in here. Okay, so now the next step is to, com to compile um, our device tree overlay. Therefore, I will start this Docker container in which I, um, yeah, which I'm using here. And the first thing I was, I will source my environment. Then I can cd into the um, Linux SDKs folder kernel. And now I will run make. The architecture is ARM64. The cross compiler. I always forget about this cross compiler. It's the cross compiler, so make arch is arm64, cross compile is our arch non Linux GNU here, and I only want to build the um, device tree files. So DTBS is a target for only compiling the device tree files. Okay, done. The next thing is I have to take my SD card here and plug it into my PC. Okay, and now I can copy the compiled device tree, which is um, ok6251c.dtb to run media Johannes rootfs boot. Oh, wrong password. Okay, let's unmount the SD card. And let's plug it into our board. And we can monitor the boot over a serial terminal. So, yeah, let's start this. Okay, now you can see the other user LED is flashing. Let me wait for logging in. Okay, let me log in with the root user. And now if I take a look at sys class LEDs, we should have my LED available here. Let's navigate into my, the folder here. And for example, here we have this brightness value. And if I write a zero to it, our LED is turned off now. Or another thing we could do is we have this trigger file here. If I cat it, I can see the available triggers. Currently we have no trigger, so the only way to set or unset the LED is by using this brightness field here. So if I write a one to it, the LED is on again. And for example, if I use these, the heartbeat trigger, um, our LED will generate a heartbeat pattern. So let's add this as a trigger. And now you can see the LED is blinking like this. So cool, we have successfully added an LED to the device tree. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.